I'm Owen Walsh, I'm the founder of Brussels Beer City, uh, also the founder of the Beer Cult Festival that's taking place in Brussels in July from the 14th to the 17th. Uh, I'm a beer writer based in Brussels for over a decade writing about Brussels beer, history, traditions, culture and anything in between. What gave you the inspiration to tr start uh, Brussels uh, Beer City? Uh, good question. Uh, desperation, I think, was, uh, was, one, was, one, uh, was one reason. Um, back in 2017 when I started, I was in the middle of doing a beer sommelier course in, in Dutch here in Brussels. And the course cost a lot of money and I needed to justify the expense of that by using the knowledge I had gained from that to some sort of productive end. I'd already tried to do two blogs about Brussels previously that had failed, so I thought, third time's a charm, why don't I combine what I'm doing in the beer sommelier course and uh, my love of writing or my interest in starting a writing project and start a blog about uh, Brussels beer. What's your inspiration then for Beer Cult? It's a well, it's, really interesting festival. Uh, some of it is ego, probably. <laughs> um, but it's also uh, five years since I started writing about Brussels beer. Uh, in those five years, I think a lot has changed in Brussels beer. Anyone who's lived in the city since 2017 and 2015 would have seen that we've got, I don't know, three or four times as many breweries now as we did then. Um, I've also had a chance in those five years to work with a lot of really uh, good friends, uh, made good friends, worked with a lot of excellent people in the city, telling their stories, writing about them, working on projects with them. So the, the festival, which marks five years of Brussels Beer City, was really an opportunity to sort of celebrate um, those people as much as it is to, 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 to mark an important moment, five years being, you know, a not insignificant time to run a project like Brussels Beer City, to bring all that together, to work with some friends of mine on some fun events, um, in Brussels, celebrating everything about Brussels beer, make some beers, do some fun fun projects together, and uh, yeah, just have a nice weekend. What dates are the festival, and what are some of the highlights you point out for beer lovers to go to? So the festival is starting on Thursday, July 14th, and it's going to run that weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and ending in the Sunday evening on the 17th. Uh, so on the first, on the launch day on the 14th. We're going to be launching five special beers that have been brewed especially for the festival in collaboration with five local Brussels breweries and five people who I have covered over the course of my writing career at Brussels Beer City. So we have uh, a beer with uh, Colleen Rakowski who's a brewer who works at uh, Cantillon and is originally from Philadelphia in the US. We have a beer with uh, Yannick Scandinay who founded Fermentings, a famous shop and uh, fermentation workshop here who hired me to do the first ever event I did for Brussels Beer City. Uh, Rich Soriano, we're doing a beer, a uh, US based person here in Brussels who's famous in the Lambic community, Cedric Doutinger who founded Beer.be news website, and Helene Spitels who is a guide and sommelier and writer based here in Brussels. Exciting, yeah. and what can you give uh, from the other days? Just yeah. um, other pinpoints, I know there's lots going on on all the other days. Yeah, so there's a bunch of events, at least two or three taking place every day. On the Friday we have the launch of uh, a new book by me, uh, History of Brussels Beer in 50 Objects, which is a collection of articles I've been writing since 2021 about the history of Brussels beer. Uh, we also have something I'm really excited about which is an exhibition that evening on Friday of uh, artwork from illustrators and graphic designers who work with Belgian breweries and, and wineries. So some of the famous ones that you will know like Brasserie de la Seine, La Source, uh, Mule for example, but also some of the lesser known ones like Brasserie La Jungle and Gudul which is a winery based here. On Saturday we have a whole host of events going on throughout the day. We've got a, a, t a walk in the morning. We've got a beer and cheese tasting at Le Fruitier, which is a cheese shop here in Brussels. Uh, Saturday afternoon, we have a fantastic live podcast show from Belgian Smack. For anybody who doesn't know it, Belgian Smack is an award-winning uh, podcast um, writing project run also by another Irishman based here in Belgium. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the Brussels Beer Cafe. Uh, what's its future, what's its past, why is it great, is it in danger? We're going to be doing that with uh, Yvan de Bats from Brasserie de la Seine, Jody Lesieur from Gist, uh, the bar here in Brussels, and Joaquin Barbosa who works at the Brussels Fabrique, which is a, uh, an activist organization that works in defense of Brussels' uh, built heritage and Brussels beer cafes. That evening we've got Adrian Tierney-Jones who's coming over from the UK to talk about British beer. We're going to have some British uh, style beer from Brasserie La Jungle based here in Brussels. We're gonna talk about the influences of Belgian beer in the UK and the UK on Belgium. And then on Sunday, again, we have a, a whole roster of events. I'm doing a brewery bike tour in the morning. Uh, then we have a beer brunch at Brussels Beer Project's new brewery in Port Sud in Anderlecht with uh, a South Asian food truck, which is gonna be fantastic. And there'll be a tour and there'll be some nice bottles on the menu. Um, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, we have a really 
uh, a, a, an event I'm really looking forward to, which is a, a compound drinking tasting, which is basically we're going to talk through the world of fermented drinks from beer to wine to cider and to sake. And we're going to do that with some really interesting and knowledgeable experts. There are still tickets available for that. Uh, that's at Brasserie on Stummelings on Sunday afternoon. And then we're going to wrap everything up on Sunday evening with Pete Brown, who is a multi award winning uh, beer writer based in the UK. He recently just put out a book one of the most interesting voices in beer, one of the best beer writers out there. And we're going to sit down and have a conversation with him at Brasserie de la Mule on Sunday evening, and that's going to wrap up the festival. Excellent. Uh, what gave you your inspiration for, uh, uh, you know, your new book, The 50 Objects, that you picked out? Uh... Um, well, it was a sort of a, an act of creative desperation halfway through the pandemic. So I decided to launch the project uh, spring 2021 and um, we were a year into the pandemic and various lockdowns at that point and I was really struggling for ideas about what to write about for Brussels Beer City. Four years in as well it's sometimes hard to come up with creative new ideas. Uh, so rather than come up with something totally new I decided to rip off an idea that somebody else had done. Um, anybody might be familiar with the, the BBC and British Museum series A History of the World in 100 Objects and I thought that was a nice sort of concept to transplant and tell the story about Brussels beer through 50 objects selected by me that tell the story of, the, uh, of beer in the city, of brewing, but also of urban history. Um, so talking about the origins of Brussels, how it's changed throughout the years and the thousand years since it's been around, um, the ups and downs of brewing and sort of the brewing renaissance that we've seen over the last decade. So that book is coming out uh, next Friday. We're gonna do the launch at, on Stummelings on the 15th. Uh, everybody's welcome to come. Uh, and then it will be on sale in uh, independent book and beer shops around Brussels as of Saturday next weekend. How hard is it, is it to sell beer books? <laughs> How hard is it? Yeah. How long do you have? <laughs> um, so this is self-published, so I'm in control of everything. I get to decide the content, the design, the distribution. Um, so it's done through the Amazon Kindle platform. It's very difficult. There's no money. I mean, any beer writer will tell you there's no money in writing. There's no money in beer writing. Um, you write a book because you feel compelled to do it, I think, rather than in, in, in the search of money. There's maybe room in the beer writing world, and I'm talking globally, for five, ten people to make, and that's probably being optimistic, taking the US and the UK, that's to, who could make money from writing books. Which is your favorite object that you reported on? It was that's a good question. I, um, so there's 50 of them, so there's a lot. Uh, and as part of the publication of the book, I'm also doing a sort of audio walking tour, which will be published alongside the book, so people can go to the places where those objects are from, listen to the story from the book, and sort of give it a bit more context. So I've been rereading that as part of the, the recordings, and every object I come up to, I think, oh yeah, that tells a really good story, or I'd forgotten about how, how good that was, because out of 50, some of them stand out more than others. Um, I really like, uh, there's a book that was, that was published in the 1950s called Le Mémoire de Jeff Lambic. Uh, for Brussels beer drinkers, it's, it's quite a totemic, famous book. Um, and it's as interesting for the content as it is for the story behind it, because it basically tells the life story of a man called Jeff Lambic, uh, who was born on the 1st of April in the 1860s. Um, and his life as a beer drinker in sort of the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. And most of what we know about that era, the, the beers that were drunk, uh, where they were drunk, the different kinds of bars and cafes, comes from that book. Um, I'm not going to spoil, there's a spoiler in the book that I've written about that book. I'm not going to spoil it. People are going to have to buy the book to find out why that particular book is quite interesting and always makes me laugh when I read it. Excellent. And your first book was about? My first book was also a self-published collection of uh, stories about Brussels breweries that had uh, disappeared, so vanished Brussels breweries essentially. Uh, the 19th and 20th century story of industrial brewing. Uh, all the names that you'll see on enamel boards in bars like uh, Mutter Lambic and, and, and other bars that have disappeared and nobody knows what they were like, so I, I wrote a little, a little slim monograph about that, which is actually still available in some bookshops. Yeah, it's a quite, reading it, it's quite a nostalgic book in a way. It's almost sad, but also looking ahead a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, and, uh, with, the, with, the, with the current book, it's the same. There's so much Brussels beer history out there, but because of how badly the industry fared in the late 20th century, you know, from the 70s to the 90s, 
all of those breweries don't don't exist. They exist only in the popular consciousness, memory, and nostalgia. None of the beers exist. There's only one beer brewed in that time, and we're talking everybody except Cantillon because they're the only ones who still survive. There's only one brew, a beer that was brewed in those years that still exists. It's not brewed in Brussels anymore, and I think it's probably a pale shadow of what it used to be. Um, so there's a lot of nostalgia around that, and for me as well, you know, as a as an arrivist, as someone who's come to Brussels, live in Brussels, that's really fascinating because for me, it's it sort of helps to explain why certain parts of the city look the way they do, but also why the beer industry that we have today looks the way it does. Because essentially it started from carte blanche, uh, grand zero, in yeah, how, how you would date the beer revival, maybe 2002, and for Cinebeer, maybe 2006, when Mutter Lambic started. It started from nothing. It was Cantillon and that was it. Whereas 100 years previously, there was 100 odd breweries, all doing interesting different things. So it's happy times today then for Brussels beer and Belgian beer, would you um, say? I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a na naturally a pessimistic person, but I think we're not at a point yet where the market is saturated. So we've seen an explosion in breweries that hasn't even, re it slowed down a little bit because of the pandemic, but even during the pandemic, we saw two breweries open in 2021. And we've seen already this year, uh, two more breweries open. So there's going to continue to be a slow, actually three this year, there's going to be continue to be a slow trickle. I think it's going to change. The profile of the breweries is changing a bit. I think it's harder. It, it's sort of, you're seeing, it's harder to be a mid-level brewery now. I think it's okay for the like small projects and the projects that have a lot of funding behind them. I think where you're getting in the middle is the squeeze. The projects that have been around for three or four years, and if they don't start growing or start expanding or, or, or professionalizing their production, you might see them struggle. But it is, it's really exciting. Like we haven't had the variety of beers in Brussels that we have now in 100 years, 50 years, well, 75 years. Um, so that's good to see. And I, I, but I think on the pessimistic side, we haven't seen what the consequences of the pandemic are really gonna be. People have been struggling and they continue to struggle. and. They'll probably continue struggling over the next four or five years. And I think that's when we're going to see the impact of the pandemic work its way through the industry as people come to the end of their rescue plans or their survival mode, or they just get fed up and they just say, I can't do the struggle anymore because with the cost of living crisis and everything, it's becoming increasingly difficult for everybody. Everything's becoming more expensive. It's more expensive to make the beer. It's very expensive to buy the beer as a consumer, so how, how that's going to work its way out, I don't know. Thank you so much for talking to the Beer Idiots. Thank you for having me.